Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown from the Caregiving Years Training Academy. Thanks for those who are joining me live and thanks for those who are watching. We're gonna do an overview of the training programs that I've developed over the past almost five years. And really the intent of this is for you to figure out what fits for you. I'm gonna give you my contact information at the end of our time together. And I would love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to talk out what your goals are, what your budget is, and what we might be able to do together. So I just wanna let you know, this is the beginning of the conversation, but it doesn't end when our presentation ends. Okay, so just a little bit about me. I started working with family caregivers 30 years ago in community-based settings, as well as in nursing homes as an admissions director. I switched from writing to serving, and I was fascinated by the stories that I heard as I was supporting family caregivers. And that really drove and inspired me to start a small business to help and serve them. So I launched a website called caregiving.com in 1996, which I have sold, and I sold it in March of 2020. And throughout that experience, I really spent pretty much every day listening to family caregivers. I had online support groups, I had daily chats, and I really was committed to being a student of the experience. And because of that, I was able to launch a training program that when I first launched, it was specific to those who had already been through a caregiving experience or former family caregivers. And then over the years, family caregivers have also enrolled in the program. So the very first training program that I launched was the Certified Caregiving Consultant Training Program. And the first session of that program was just about five years ago. Okay, and I still help my parents. So I also, I'm, I'm in a current caregiving situation, which I think is interesting. So my parents live about 10 minutes from me and I started helping them in 2004 after my dad's bladder cancer surgery. So I just like to always clarify the purpose of our training program. So I just like to always set the intent right up front that our programs are not for those who are interested in becoming certified nursing assistants or home health aides. So that's not what our training program is. In addition, our training program is about a caregiving experience. So it's not specific to a disease process. We also teach you about services you can add to a small business, but we don't provide you with the logistics of how you start a small business. There's tons of resources out there that can help you. The Small Business Administration and LegalZoom, for instance, are just two of them. So the program is for anyone with a personal caregiving experience that wants to help others who has amassed a knowledge base that they say, I can't let this go. It's so valuable. I want to get out there and really make a difference to those who are in a caregiving experience. So the training programs help you if you want to be a volunteer, for instance, and lead a support group for family caregivers or former family caregivers, or if you really want to start your own business. And through your business, you would offer consulting services for family caregivers. The bottom line is you want to make a difference. And what I hope the training programs give you is a choice as to how that difference shows up in your day. So here's what our work really is. We are specialists in the practice of family caregiving. So when a certified caregiving consultant gets out into their community and online to work, they are sharing their knowledge about the caregiving experience, and they are adding into what they learned during their own personal journey. So it's the combination of both, the personal experience plus what I've learned over the past 30 years, that insight into that caregiving experience. So over the years, we've had more than 200 persons enroll in our program. We've had CCCs in five different countries. Right now, we have CCCs in four countries. We've had 200 enroll, and I would say currently we have around 70 CCCs who are active and working in four different countries. So I think of this as we help you make a difference, lead support groups, add services to your small business. So 
So here's an overview of our training programs right now. So I added master classes this year. There's a master class that talks about compassion fatigue during caregiving and the stages of caregiving. In 1997, after I had my website going for about a year, I was getting all these email messages asking people for, asking people, people asking me for guidance. And I started thinking, what's the best guidance I can offer? And it occurred to me that there is some comfort when there is a staging of a disease process. We know where we are now. We know what might be coming, this ability to kind of pre be prepared for what could happen next doesn't put us out there completely out of control. It's a way of adding some controls in an uncontrollable situation. So I thought, well, what if we did that with the caregiving experience? So the first iteration of the concept had four stages. A year later, I added two more stages. And then over the years, I've revised and tweak the concept at least eight times. It is so important to me that the information I'm sharing is relevant and timely. I constantly look to see what needs to be tweaked to reflect what's happening today. The advocate training is a low level of entry to get an experience of what it's like to go through training with me and then what you can experience during the training. So the advocate training helps you really put a message out to the world about what you want to change around the caregiving experience. So I give you a plan that you implement that's personalized to the difference you want to make. The advocate training is an hour. The facilitator training helps you start a support group and lead a really effective conversation with family caregivers. Right now, we have a facilitator training for those in a current caregiving situation. I'm gonna add a facilitator training for grief. I started doing grief support groups in April, I think of this year. And I think there's such a need that will add training if someone just wants to be specific around grieving. And I think our experience in caregiving is so valuable when we look to supporting former family caregivers in their grief, because we understand when a caregiving experience ends, there are layers of loss. There's the loss of a family member. There's a loss of a role, but we also kind of feel like we lost a little bit of ourselves during that experience. And so how do we come out of it and start again? So I think that our experience in caregiving really speaks to how well we can do in leading a grief support group because we understand what that caregiving experience has been like. The specialist training is about becoming a personal assistant for family caregivers, helping them manage tasks and to-dos. The consultant training is in essence becoming something like a life coach for family caregivers. I went through life coach training in 2004 and I take the communication strategy used from that training and teach it in the consultant training. In the life coach training, I learned all these tools and strategies to use with clients and honest to goodness, the ones I used with family caregivers were a three prong communication strategy. It was what released their stress. And when their stress was minimized, they were able to think more clearly about what could help. I'm a small business owner. I have a virtual assistant and I also have a business coach on a regular basis. And I think in family caregiving, we are also running a small business and we need a coach and an assistant. And so that's the consultant and the specialist. The only two training programs that are tied together are the consultant and the educator. As a consultant, you get this immersion into the caregiving experience, including the six stages. And then as an educator, you take that six stages concept and deliver it as a workshop online or virtually. And you can see why they're tied together. It's very difficult to give a presentation about a concept unless you've really studied the concept. 
Okay, so not only have I, oh, Sharon, you're a certified life coach. Okay, I went through IPEC, by the way. Okay, yeah. And when I went through life coach training in 2004, it was still this new idea. And I think of our certified caregiving consultants as a new idea out there. Okay, so just like I really attended to that concept of the stages and making sure it was relevant and timely, I've also done that with the training program. So in 2018, I updated all the material. So the material includes recordings and modules plus live training. And I re revised both. And then I added additional opportunities to train with certified caregiving consultants. So graduates of our program become skills consultants and they really help students with particular skills, including our communication strategy, which is asking, listening, and validating. So we have skills consultants for those three skills. We also have a skills consultant around networking. So how do you get out there and network about your new business? We have one that helps with light case management skills. So really pulling out how we managed the care personally, and then using that in a way that we can help our clients. And then we have a skills consultant that helps with our complimentary sessions. So if we're going out there in the world to start a business, we are delivering complimentary sessions so people can experience our work, but we're also in a sales cycle and that's intimidating. So the skills consultant helps us with our skills strategy as we're out delivering complimentary sessions. I actually kind of a little bit ahead of myself on that, but anyway, so I'm gonna repeat myself in a few slides, but you guys will forgive me for that. Okay, the other thing that I did in 2018 was I added what we call our wheels. And so Sharon, you'll recognize this because it's really inspired by what life coaches use, which is a life wheel. When I was thinking about assessments and tools that we could use with our clients, I really wanted to get away from something that keeps people into a yes, no situation. And I wanted people to be engaged in a conversation. So these wheels are really conversation starters. There's about 40 of them <laughs> because I got so <laughs> attached to how fun these wheels are. So I have used these wheels in virtual support groups and I will be in a group where I don't know anyone and no one knows each other. And I pull up a wheel and people just start to say, you know what word is missing or you know what word speaks to me? So these wheels are standalone or partnered and they also are part of plans. So we also added a family emergency planning tool to help family caregivers really think about the what ifs of what could happen when we're in a caregiving experience. We are crisis managers, that's what we do not every day, but on a regular basis. And so this family emergency planning tool helps you put up in place the plans around what if this happens. And so that plan includes wheels as well. There's also a break plan and that plan includes an, um, a conversation starter around what do you wanna break from? Because sometimes people say, you know, you really need a break and you're like, I am so stressed out. The idea of trying to figure this out is too much for me. But if there's an idea of what do we want to break from, then it helps us figure out what we what we want to break to. And then it can help us figure out how do we want to communicate that need for a break? Because sometimes we think, oh my gosh, I just don't even want to get <laughs> into a conversation about the fact that I need a break. But that break planning tool helps you put it in place. Okay. So then last year, I added those additional training programs, and then I built on that to create basically a package where if you wanted to go through three different training courses, consultant, facilitator, and educator, you could do that as part of a package, you get a price break. And then I also teach you time management skills. It's really about facing fears and moving through them. That's how we make the most of our time. So that training management program helps you figure out, oh my gosh, what am I afraid of? And then how do you take care of it? And then we have a marketing boot camp that's part of that program called Sage Giving, where we think about what's your marketing plan? What's your message you wanna put out there in the world? 
Something that I just added is a way for us to give you a certificate once you complete a course that's easy for you to share on social media. And so we use a service called Accredible. And it's also a really great way for you to save your, your certifications and your badges. So what we were doing before was emailing PDFs and you had to keep track of them in your emails, but now you have basically a place you go where you see all your certifications. In addition, it's a way for you to let people know about your investment in your training. It's also a way for us to ensure that those who are certified are up to date. Okay, and then this year I also updated the consultant training program again. So I updated it for the second time. I re-recorded all the modules and I have enhanced the training that happens during our live session. We also added a module on cultural sensitivity and we did that this summer. Danelle LeBlanc, who's one of our CCCs, recorded this module. We really felt that that was something that was missing in the program and something that was necessary for the program. And then we added the family emergency planning tool. So I've been thinking about different services that we can offer to clients. So as consultants, you can be a healing listener, a legacy listener, or offer resilience reflections. Healing listeners came out of all these conversations I've had with people who are in such deep grief. I thought, gosh, we just really need someone to listen. And we also know that deep grieving happens during caregiving. So healing listeners can help during and after a caregiving experience. Legacy listeners are for family, family caregivers, former family caregivers. It's a way to bring in some closure around the caregiving experience and to honor the carry's life. So as a legacy listener, we sit with family caregivers, former family caregivers, and we hear their stories. We can record the conversations if that family, former family caregiver wants, but it's just an opportunity for them to share memories with someone who understands the power of those memories. Particularly after caregiving ends, some of the memories we have, we think, oh my gosh, I'm kind of haunted by this but it could be difficult to figure out who do I tell this to? And so to tell it to a consultant is to share with someone who has these really great communication strategies, plus their own personal insights into what that experience is like. Resilience Reflections will be new in 2021. I have really been doing some work around resilience and it occurred to me that we have moments of resilience throughout our day we just overlook them. So connecting with a consultant to talk out the day so the consultant could say, I hear your resilience. I saw your resilience. I'm gonna let you know how your resilience shows up for you in your day. Because our resilience is a strength and when we take care of it, it takes care of us. So we'll add a masterclass on resilience in January. In addition, we're gonna add another turnkey presentation program to our educator training. So those who complete the educator training deliver the caregiving years, six stages to a meaningful journey, online or in our communities. And what they receive after that training is a variety of ways that they can deliver that concept. They can receive PowerPoints, they get insights from me about how they can tweak that concept so it reflects their specialty. And in addition, we're gonna add a daily healing plan. So in my work around grief, it occurred to me that we're healing through with a strategy that helps in order to get to a better place like acceptance or love, or peace of mind. So this daily healing plan walks family caregivers and former family caregivers through a plan that they can use every day. They can really tap into what the loss is they're feeling and then put a plan in place to take care of that loss. 
So I really believe in what we do because it provides a level of accountability and professionalism. We are professionals and so the training reflects that. We have been approved for 37 CEUs for the Certified Caregiving Consultant Training Program. We use a CEU provider here in the state of Illinois. Nurses in all 50 states can earn 37 CEUs and then healthcare professionals in Illinois. In addition, we offer CEUs for certified senior advisors, certified dementia practitioners, and those who are HR managers through SHRM. I think the other part about going through our training program is that it adds this level of confidence to what you're doing because we always minimize our expertise, right? We always think, oh, I don't know enough. Oh, right, exactly. And I really want this training program to feel like it's enough for you. Sometimes people are like, well, I got to get to the next training. We can train for the rest of our life and never really get out there to do the work. So I hope this feels inclusive enough that you have the confidence to go out there. But we're experts. And this training program pulls out your expertise so that when you're working with family caregivers, you can feel confident about the conversations that you're having with them. In addition, we have a community of CCCs and they collaborate and work with each other. For instance, I just talked to one of our CCCs last week. She's working with two other CCCs to manage a Facebook group. One of the CCCs got too busy. And so her group was kind of last on her to-do list, which she felt bad about. She asked two other CCCs if they'd be interested. So now they'll work together. And what it does is it creates more connections for the consultants and another opportunity for them to talk about their work. It's a win, win, win. So that happens pretty regularly. When consultants have podcasts, they ask other podcasts to be guests. They collaborate on presentations that they do together in workshops. In 2019, the consultants collaborated on in-person conferences. Obviously, we couldn't do that this year, but at some point, we'll probably think about doing that again, offering regional conferences. So here's what I think qualifies you for our training program. It's having that personal experience. It's this idea that you are compassion, compassionate, open-minded, and curious. Something else that we teach in the training program that's so helpful is how to take care of your story so that when you're with a client, you're focused on their story. And our ability to be curious and open-minded is what's so helpful in closing out our own story and is so helpful when we're opening up someone else's story. And it's that piece around our own story that allows us to show up fully and completely for someone else's. So just, uh, I always like to remind people that this is hard work. Anytime you put yourself out there with a small business or a new venture, even if it's starting a support group that you don't get paid for, it's hard work. It takes commitment, it takes dedication, it takes diligence, and it takes tenacity. So I, I just like to put that out there because this is not the magic bullet that just changes your life overnight. This is where you start. And then we help you by supporting you throughout so that you don't feel alone in the hard work. When I started my small business, I felt alone in what I was doing. And you have that same feeling during a caregiving experience. It's very important to me that you feel like you're a part of a group that wants you to be successful because your success brings success to everyone, which is why we want you to be successful. There's that phrase, about ships, something, you know, we all, I don't know, ships and water, you know what I'm trying to say, but that's what we really want to do is make sure that everybody feels like they have to be successful. Okay, so it's really being a part of a community. You're not there out on your own trying to figure this out. So we do events on a regular basis. And as graduates of the program, you are encouraged to submit a proposal to present. We did a beginning again retreat in August for former family caregivers. We had probably 10 CCs who were part of the presenter faculty. 
Healing the Holidays is, a, is an event that we did in November before the holidays and we'll do it again in January after the holidays. And it was myself and two CCCs. And then we're doing a virtual conference in April called the Caregiving, the Caring Conference, which is about our resilience. And the theme aptly titled is Our Resilient Spirit. And it's thinking about during these dark months, what do we do that gets us through? What does our resilience look like? And we're gonna share lessons learned about our resilience at the conference. We also do an event called our Big Ideas where we brainstorm big ideas about what could improve the caregiving experience. We did it in October and we'll do it again in February. So just to give you an idea of what people say about the events that they attend that we offer, you know, it's obviously I'm gonna, <laughs> we don't get bad feedback, but obviously I'm gonna share good feedback, but we don't ever get bad feedback. Overwhelmingly people say, what a great way to spend my time. And I'll tell you what, if people feel like their time was well spent, that's invaluable. Cause sometimes it's the time that we're chasing and if you invest time in an event that you think, oh my gosh, what a waste. Why did I do that? That is not a good event. So people overwhelmingly say how much they enjoyed the time they spent with us and how much they gained from it. Because we're very honest and authentic in the conferences and events that we offer. And it actually is something that I always brought into my work with family caregivers. I have tried to be honest about my experience because that gives courage to someone else to be honest. So truth creates more truth. And that's really what we focused on. So some successes to share with you. So Danelle, who I mentioned, created our systemic racism module, graduated in May of 2018 as a consultant and educator. She submitted a proposal through her local area agency on aging weeks later, and she received a grant to actually present the caregiving years six stages to a meaningful journey in her region. And she re was renewed earlier, let's see, I guess it was she was renewed again this summer. So she'll, she's doing it again for her second year. And then Danelle was part of a panel discussion that we organized very quickly in June. And our panelists shared their personal caregiving experience and how systemic racism of impacted them in a way that they hadn't really thought about until we started talking about it. It was really powerful. And as a result of that panel discussion, two of our CCCs participated in that. They were invited to present to students in the USC gerontology program and to members of the National Association of Healthcare Advocacy. Our CCs have been active in the media. So Pat Egan, who's one of our CCs in Boulder, was part of a global campaign to bring awareness to the caregiving experience. I was actually one of them too. It was really a great experience. Earlier this year, several of our CCs were quoted in an article that appeared on OprahMag.com. One of our CCs participated in a panel discussion that was facilitated by a reporter for Kaiser Health News, and then it was live streamed. And then I keep track of how we are engaged in the news, and you can learn more if you go to the website. In addition, this year we offered and created pilot programs. They're free of charge to family caregivers. The Care Coach program provides three months of free email and tech support with a certified caregiving consultant. In addition, we have a certified family care manager program, which teaches family caregivers about their experience. And the instructors in that course are CCCs. So there's 12 different classes. Students enroll, receive access to the 12 courses. They create their own agenda. They pick which class they wanna take. They do some work. They meet live with a consultant and then they complete the training with an exam. And then when they complete all 12 classes, they are certified as a family care manager. Last year, 
I started rethinking that term family caregiver and I started thinking about how do we professionalize that experience? So for instance, if you have to take time away from your career, how do you describe that on your resume? What if you describe it as, I was a certified family care manager. My caregiving experience was caring for my parents with chronic illnesses. Here's how I managed, here's how I strategized, here are the decisions that I made, here's the budget that I worked within. All these skills we apply in the business world, but there's no framework, there's no language to do that. So I wanted to create that. And that's what the Certified Family Care Manager program is. And so Family Care Manager refers to family caregivers. That's our professional title. We did a poll to figure out what is that name, and that was the name that people picked. So in terms of getting sponsored to offset the cost of the training, you can check with your employer to see if there is money in the training budget for this. Honestly, every organization needs a CCC on staff. One of our CCCs is my co-facilitator for our grieving group, and we had our meeting last night. And she said that more and more, her coworkers are coming up to her and saying, okay, this is what's going on in our family. This is what's happening with our mom. And if you haven't received the training on how to manage those conversations, it's absolutely overwhelming. So if you are the one in your office that's the great listener, that's really compassionate and caring, people are going to come to you and say, can you listen? And it'll burn you out. So something that's really powerful about the training program is that it teaches you how not to burn out. In essence, we equip you with the ability to be present and then to move on. And it's, it's what I used every day in interacting with family caregivers. I would leave our chat room knowing that I could show up tomorrow without worrying tonight. And others would just freak out about conversations that we had in the chat room and they would say, don't you worry about this? And I would say, I absolutely trust them that they're gonna be okay. And I trusted that I was fully present for them for an hour and I gave them a good gift. And I think that's enough. So we are struggling with this idea of what's enough during caregiving. We struggle with that in our own business and the training program helps you put boundaries around that. You can also check with your church. I know that revenue streams into churches is less because of the pandemic, but there's a greater need for churches to really take care of their congregates in a caregiving experience. So it could be that they pay for half of it and then you work out a barter where, okay, they pay for half of it and then you make yourself available as a volunteer to help congregate members in a caregiving situation one hour a week for a certain period of time. I would say, honestly, that would be a great opportunity for you. The best way for your business to be successful is to connect and create. The more you connect with individuals in a caregiving and after caregiving experience, the more you're gonna be able to create for them in a way that helps them. So those connections are really helpful. So if you can work out a situation where someone pays part of your tuition and then in exchange for that, you give them work, they are giving you pro bono clients, which will then turn into clients for you. Okay, so we're getting towards the end. I always like to leave time for questions. So here are our training programs right now. The advocate training is the Easiest training to complete, it's one hour. You can join me live or watch a recorded um, one hour video and that's a low price entry point. Our facilitator training is for support group leaders. Our specialist training is for someone who wants to be that family caregiver's personal assistant to help with to-dos and tasks. And then the consultant training is for those who wanna add that service to a small business where they might charge family caregivers for one-on-one -on -one sessions, for leading small group discussions, and for delivering presentations like the educator would online or virtually. But also mention that, again, you can think of that consultant role within your workplace if you are already working. 
just as an additional support piece that you add in the workplace. And then SAGE giving wraps up three of those training programs into a package and adds in time management skills and our boot camp. We have a pricing structure that gives you a suggested price and then a minimum price. So we've priced it based on looking at other programs and seeing what else is out on the marketplace. And then we come up with that suggested price, knowing that maybe your budget is different. So you could adjust the pricing as long as the pricing is at the minimum or higher. We do a price increase every January 1st. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, and then here's my contact information. And I'd love again to schedule a phone call with each of you to talk out what your goals are, what you wanna achieve, and what you're thinking about the training programs. What's your budget right now? For instance, I talked to someone yesterday who said, you know what, I need to start small. And I said, that is awesome, right? Because if your budget says start small, if you push yourself into something that is beyond your budget, it is too stressful. It is too much pressure on you. So I am so budget friendly <laughs> that I really want you to feel like no matter where you are in your budget, you can start with something and then you can build from there. You can build from there. Okay, so let me stop sharing and then throw it out to you guys in terms of what questions might you have. So am, am I in or there's a Wendy person I see too. Um, no, Denise, this sounds fantastic. Um, gosh, so much of what you talked about aligns with my journey <laughs> of life. Um, currently in, and we can set this up on a one-on-one, -on -one, but it, it really resonates with me. Um, the skills I've developed in the situation right now, I'm caring for my mom with vascular dementia. She's in the middle to late stages. So um, I truly understand the, the privileges of this journey because it's really changing me um, in good ways when I let it and very insightful ways when I get into the depths of it. So I do, I think it's so rich with opportunities for people to take this experience and use it forward instead of constantly the, I can't do it, it's too much. It's, you know, allowing that mental shift to really bring them down. So um, I'm glad that I connect. I'm glad this sort of came across my, my news feed when it did, so. Something too that I really think is important to offer in this training program, and that is a way for you to turn it into the services that you want. So I yeah. provide this foundation and the foundation really is the insight into the caregiving experience. And then you turn that into your specialty. Some mm -hmm. of the consultants pick a specialty that's based on a disease process, like what it's like right. to care for someone with dementia. Sometimes it's about the relationship What's it like when you are caring for a spouse? Sometimes it's a combination. It even could be about a situation. So caring for, caring for someone while you are a small business owner or in the workplace. So if you have a niche, then you have a target market. Yeah. And the other thing that's so brilliant about this is there is no competition within our CCC group <laughs> because everybody yeah. has something different. But as a CCC, you have this resource you can go to when you have a question that a client has asked that you're like, I'm not really sure, but I have a right. community of experts, I'm gonna to go to them. So thinking about this pressure to be the expert, the other thing sometimes we think is, I don't know everything, so I can't serve anyone. Well, you have knowledge about a specialty, which is why you serve that specialty. And then if there's a question that comes out up outside of your specialty, you just go to your community and say, hey, CCCs, who knows right. this? Right. So it, yeah, it's a way to be of service without feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to know everything because it mm -hmm. literally is impossible, impossible to know everything. Right, right. So what would be the next step? 
Denise, schedule a one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, yes. Let's okay. schedule a time to connect. Okay. And I think you have my email because I emailed you this morning. Yes. So feel free to respond with days and times that work for you. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and, and you're on the East Coast? West Coast? I'm in Chicago, so I'm Central Time. Central, okay. And conversations last anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And anyone who's- I was just thinking I may, oh, may just send you my resume ahead of time to just oh. so you can glean yes. the variety of experiences that have led me here today. So. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And when people reach out to schedule their one-on-ones, they often will say, here's my story. And it's very helpful yeah. for me to have that. So I have an idea yeah. of where you might want to go, but then you tell me where you want to go. Right. Right. Good. And if Good. anybody's watching the recording, you know what? I'll just put up my contact information one more time. Please feel free to reach out. And again, I really, it is helpful for me, which you would think, why is it helpful for her? <laughs> but the more people I talk to sure. about what they want, the more I can really create that. So it's yeah, I just, I love all of the, um, the revamp. It's, it's obvious that you don't create something and let it still. You continually look at it and redevelop and tweak and improve. And that's that's uh, attractive to me in terms of a program. And just think about all that's changed since March. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I think yeah. we are still trying to absorb the changes in a way to make sense of them and to figure mm -hmm. out what's the permanent change and then how do we serve that permanent change? Right. What happens with adults day centers? No. Oh. You know, thinking about that as a resource for family caregivers, how does that stay a resource? When does that become a resource again? All of that. Thinking about what's the substitute then for adult day centers? And then family caregivers who are now working from home, which it seems like we all wanted, but <laughs> But then you're working, you're working from home and maybe caregiving is at home with you and maybe going to work every day was your break from caregiving. And yeah, it is right. more than just 24 seven, it's double 24 seven, right? You feel like you're working all the time, but you're also caregiving all the time. Mm -hmm. And so many of those stress relievers for us are just unaccessible. You can't go to the gym. You can't go to the movies. You can't go to get something, right? So, yeah. Right, and our awareness of our risk is ever present. So this idea of we become this risk assessor mm -hmm. is another skill. So I've been thinking about what does that look like in terms of a plan? If we were to help family caregivers figure out what is the risk they can live with, so to speak, because we know that our goal is safety for our carry, and our carry's goal is to stay as independent as possible. Right. Where do we go in the middle that feels like neither one of us is making a sacrifice, but we're coming to a compromise? What is it that's acceptable for us? And mm -hmm. then thinking about other risks that we try to manage during the day. <sighs> And how do we manage that and make the right decision? So we are managing crises and every day we're trying to mitigate risks, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's an important Absolutely. conversation to have. And you know what? The other thing that I think is really important is if you're talking to someone who understands that, it opens up the conversation in a really refreshing way. If you're mm -hmm. talking, for instance, to a doctor about it, a doctor is not going to have time for the conversation and isn't going to get your worry. Most doctors, I should say. Right. So to be able to talk about it with someone who gets it is just a release and a relief in and of itself. And if you can express and someone who's the worries, not judgmental, yeah. Right. Who yeah. doesn't say you're crazy or oh my heavens, what are you right. doing? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right, it's the balance. Yes, and it's the balance and also disease processes will bring up different risks that you have to figure out how do I live oh, with sure. this. Sure. 
So if you can talk to someone, Great. for instance, who's cared for a family member with FTD, which is a very specific type of dementia that brings out some really specific behaviors. If you can talk mm -hmm. about that with someone who's experienced that, you don't have to explain the disease process and you don't have to explain what you're worried about. Right, right. Huge. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Denise. I'm sure that we yes. will connect looking, soon. Yes, looking forward I to look connecting. Forward to it. Yeah, okay. thanks to everybody else. Looking forward yes. to talking to all of you. Okay. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.